Hello, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to service a watch that's been in my collection a very long time, which I haven't gotten around to service or use because it hasn't been serviced. And it's this Girard Perigord Chronograph. I am going to take the case back off and show you what interesting movement lies within. So this movement was not manufactured by um, Girard Pergol, but rather Universal Geneva and is a calibre 281. I really like these uh, movements. I think they're well made. They're nice, got a nice layout. And um, this one's pretty cool because it's in a very um, moderate size case, but the case is quite uh, beefy in, the side, uh, in the, its design, even though it's only uh, 30 mil diameter about the crown so um, I uh, I've been wanting to do this a long time but I haven't quite had the time for it but now I've uh, set aside a little bit of time today and hopefully we can get this um, working as it should so the first thing we're going to do is uh, release the pushes so we can get the uh, movement under the case in this case, we have to unscrew for the start-stop lever. There's a screw that goes down and engages with the uh, with its pusher, like so. So you see the groove here that is engaged by the uh, bottom of the screw and holding it in place. So if we don't take this out, it'd be quite difficult to get the movement out. Next, we might as well unscrew the. Uh, setting the lever screw to allow the crown to come out. Actually, I'm going to set the, let's set the time first, so it's easier to get the hands off later on. So I'm going to retighten that like so. There we go. A bit sideways like so. I like doing on chronograph, I like doing the hands sideways so that the uh, hand remover feet don't touch the subdials as they're very delicate. So yeah, we're going to do it like that. Now we can take the... Um, now we can put the... Uh, take the winding stem out. And now for the final pusher, the reset pusher, we got a little screw here. Should we unscrew that? That should hold this pusher in place. There we go. Now this screw, I'm just going to re-tighten. And I'm going to leave that in place because it's in uh, good condition and there's no need to take it out. And uh, I don't want to lose it. So. Right, we also have two case screws, one here. One here. I'm not quite sure when this watch is uh, manufactured, but my bet would be the late 30s. Um, to mid 40s, that's uh, my best estimate. I know Universal Geneva made these movements from 1933 onward, way into the 1950s. Um, I believe also upgraded versions into the 1960s, but um, this is a fairly early non-shock protected uh, version of that. Please uh, comment if you have an idea when the watch is from. Um, yeah, so to get the movement out, we um, are going to take it out from the front. You can see the slot here for the bezel. So we're going to get the uh, case opening knife in there. Gently pry it open, like so. So I've been uh, discussing with myself um, if I was to have this style restored or not, but I have 
decided to keep it original. This is definitely original dial. Unfortunately, a little bit of the lettering, the I and GR, and uh, a couple of other letters have uh, faded. Besides that, all the print is intact and in fairly good condition. And it has uh, quite an appealing patina. And I think with the right um, strap, this is gonna look great. And not to mention the hands are in really good condition on this watch, and I think you might disagree, as a, I think a restored dial would just kind of take something away from this watch, which it has now, and that can never be, well, with a lot of time could be replaced, but at this point, I, I, I'm gonna leave it as is. I, I quite like it. So I'm just gonna remove the hands straight away. As I've discussed earlier with the subdials, let's have a look. See that so close. I really don't want to push the pressure. If you have the, um, if you want to try and get underneath there, and you have so little space, and these these um, grooves in the sub 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 dials here are so fine that you're just going to flatten them or scratch them, attempting to take it out off. And I do find if I take the dial off. These hands will come up, come off quite nicely with it. So this actually has star feet um, screws on the side, unlike in a lot of chronographs and this time, which has uh, pillar screws. These are more modern, one could say. Luckily, these screws are not rusted, which is nice. Gently lift, see? See how nicely those hands came off? And there's no damage to the subdial at all. I, uh, that's my way of doing it, and I find it's very effective. Nice. You can even see. Um, this is quite cool. You could see the um, kind of a shadow where the uh, minute quarter has been from the dirt underneath it. There's a bit of marks on this dial from other people removing the hands in the past. But, um, yeah. If you think I should restore this dial, please let me know. You should keep it original. Please comment on that as well. For now, I'm going to keep it original. I can always restore it at a later date. Uh, would look great in um, black with a gilt dial, not to uh, get too carried away. But um, for now, I, I quite like the way the design is, and um, we'll see. I'm very, I'm very fifty-fifty on this one. So if you have an input, please let me know and. Um, and uh, we'll take it from there. But from now, I'm very inclined to keep this dial as is, as in in original condition. So the UGs are not any strangers for decoration. Here we actually have, um, let's see, J, um, I can't see, is that U, W, um, marking 011914 okay let's have a look at that uh, i'm not sure if universal geneva made their own movement so they had a movement manufacturer i have heard that they did have a movement manufacturer um, i'm going to look that up and see if i can answer that straight away okay i did a quick research and the internet told me that the uw stands for universal watch um company and uh, they used that logo at least on the case bags on the U on the UG watches up until 1937 so on the movement that would indicate that this movement was probably manufactured before 1937 which would fit quite well I wouldn't surprise me if this watch is mid 1930s or even late 30s you don't know how long the movement or on the shelf before they were put into a uh, case but uh, looking at the design the size and everything it would not surprise me if this is um, 
mid thirties watch. So with the serial number, I could probably investigate that later and see when they are made. So this is the case back, which is stamped Girard Perigo. Um, but again, yeah, if you have more information, please let me know. That'd be very interesting. Well, I did uh, type in this uh, number here into the UG serial number database, also on the internet. I'm not sure how correct it is, but uh, if that is correct, and it's linked up to the UG serial number system, it says this watch would be made in 1937. That would go very well with the UW markings here. So um, yeah, this definitely got some age to it. Anyway, let's uh, start taking the um, setting and uh, winding mechanism apart. I had a pretty pre please uh, comment on an earlier video that had been fast forwarding a bit and uh, I'll agree to that. So in this case, I'm going to, I might split this up into videos if it gets too long, but uh, do a real, real time video again. So we'll start by removing the um, lower cap jewel for the balance. setting lever spring. Yoke spring. Yoke lever. This one maybe we can clean up a little bit later on. Hour wheel. Intermediate minute wheel. Let's uh, remove the cannon pinion slash time setting clutch. Minute pinion. Very nice, no wear to the uh, center wheel here, that's a good sign. Intermediate winding wheels coming out. Let's uh, completely unscrew the um, setting lever. fell out nicely. That is one of my doll screws. I'll put that to the side. Nice. You get a nice polage decoration there. Hopefully this will come up very nicely in the cleaning machine later on. Now for further dismantling, I'm going to secure the movement in my movement holder. So um, I'm going to start with the sensitive bits first. So I'm going to remove the balance. Because this is a non shock protected Balance. I'll have to take the balance out of the balance cock and remove the top top uh, capsules here by screwing them apart from the underside. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so the earlier models like this with no shock protections tend to be more work than a more modern watch. So that's why I charge a tenner extra and it's also it's not just because of I'm taking it apart, because usually they have more fiddling around with hair springs and whatnot. So in this case, I'm gonna slowly lift this around. So the regulator pins are covered by this little um, 
with this, um, oh, what's the name of it again? It's, um, it's got a protective, um, protected little bridge almost that comes over you you turn it to the side and when I remember the name of it I will uh, let you know what it's called well a regulated boot I think you would call it um, that's what we're going to call it for now let's have a look so try not to do this clumsily lift the balance up I'm going to Put it on here. Usually, a regulator boot would have a little screw slot. You could put your screwdriver in and turn to the side. This one has a hole, so I'm going to use my oiler to put it in the oil or in the hole and. thing to do is to unscrew the hairspring boot which is held in place by a screw going in sideways. I don't know how much you can see but we're trying to get this so you can get some more light. So at this point hopefully the boot will just come out so and the hairspring falls down. Good. So this movement has a brake wear overcoil, which is, it doesn't seem to have the best shape. It should be a little bit flatter than that. Um, so we might have to reshape it a little bit later. So yeah, this is the before image. And uh, it's a little bit more flat now uh, on the top overcoil here, as this was bent up a little bit more this way so uh, no that way so hopefully it's uh so i could do a tiny bit more but i'm gonna leave it there for now because these are so sensitive and i really don't want to make anything worse uh, so we're going to clean the movement and um, we'll see how this works when we put it back together so this is your balance cock i'm going to tighten the regulator screw again the, uh, not the regulator screw, I mean the uh, hairspring boot screw because I don't want it to disappear. Whatever you do, don't over torque it because it will break off and then you got a little problem. Um, this is the extra hassle is taking the entire balance out and uh, taking the these two screws that hold the plate that has the cap drill in place as well. Also, this plate also holds the regulator in uh, situ. So here we got our upper cap drill. We have our regulator. This can all go in the cleaning basket. Together with these two screws. There we go. I do find on these um, these movements, it could be worth looking at the uh, cap jewel because sometimes you'll have a groove indentation and that could uh, affect your performance quite drastically later on. So I'm gonna look under the microscope and see how it looks. So there you are, that's your flat cap jewel surface under the microscope and it's completely flat and I don't have any indentation. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, well that's the balance out of the way. Secondly, I really want to get this, um, I need to get this uh, minute counter tension spring off because these are so difficult to find and they are so fragile. I've seen Christian, that watch guy, my old uh, teacher slash master, he, uh, he has CNC machines like this, um, CNC machined these, so there is hope, but um, 
Yes, uh, look at the thickness of that. It's insane. And the fact that he has CNC'd, uh, CNC'd machine these is uh, very impressive. I um, advise you to check out the website watchguy.co.uk. They have some um, really cool articles as well. Next, let's take the pallet cock off. Yeah, a little bit of uh, power on the mainspring still, not much, it's fine. At this point, we'll start with, uh, let's have a look. I guess we could start by, let's put the, take the uh, reset hammer off. Okay, I'm going to do this um, under a microscope because here we have the reset hammer. You have a reset hammer spring, which engages with the reset hammer. The reason I want to get this off is because when I get the um, the little cock for the um, central uh, seconds recorder and the minute recorder, this is still going over above the uh, minute recorder. But to get this off, I need to disengage the spring. And I don't want to break that, so I'm just going to carefully do that under the microscope. So what I did under the microscope was kind of wriggle this and get this spring off the engaging position. So the spring will be leaning on this uh, screw here on the underside. And um, yeah, you wanna be a little bit careful with that because if you rush it, you'll break it. Now we can put the um, seconds recorder lock, we can get that off. go. Now we'll remove this cock. Girard, Perigo, and Co. Very nice. There we go, wiggle that off. Cool shape, isn't it? So, where should we go from now? Um, we might as well take the overlying driving wheel off. Oh, nice, that came off with no fight. Sometimes those can be a real pig if they're almost riveted onto the uh, fourth wheel. And uh, now, yeah, I'm just going to take some um, Random chronograph bits on. Here's the intermediate uh, chronograph wheel, spring, and screw. Start stop lever, spring, screw. Oh, uh, had a bit of tension in it, snapped off. Luckily, nothing broke. Careful, careful. Getting distracted by the camera here. Uh, kicking my movement around. Try not to do that. Now we can remove the, um, the uh, too thick. Um, have a look, get the right screwdriver would be nice as well. All right, the screwdriver is a better fit. Screw, unscrew that. 
Now these screws um, are stepped. So that means you can tighten it down to the step and you will have some free space before it reaches the screw head. The idea with that is that you can then um, use them as, uh, you, can, you can cover these um, sliding positions without, um, without uh, clamping, clamping them down. It's a collar wheel spring. Ping. Off it went, and a bit of tension, but I really didn't want to. Um, well, I guess I could have taken the collar wheel off first, but anyway, that's fine. As punishment, I got to go down on the floor and uh, find my spring, which uh, luckily is uh, intact and fine. Color wheel off. This is the spring for the um, intimate, uh, intermediate minute recorder wheel, which is here. We'll have a closer look at that when we put the movement back together. Brilliant. So now we might as well take the, um, we're down to the base movement, so we're going to take the gear train out. So we have a separate um, little cock for the escape wheel. Escape wheel.
Important to get all the screws out. So four bridge screws on this because you know to do it properly. Here we go, the gear train. So before we take the gear train out, we can have a look at the underside of the. Uh, of the uh, gear train bridge. Here we have the crown wheel, which uh, like on many chronographs is fitted on the other underside of this bridge. Two nice screws and they're actually highly polished on the bottom. Not on the top because you don't see that, but um, yeah, good indication later on is to uh, see where your screws are going is if they're polished on the inserting side or not. wheel, also known as a second wheel I believe, so you have the barrel as the first, second, third and fourth. So your third wheel and your fourth wheel. So your fourth wheel has two long pivots, one for the uh, chronograph seconds driving overlaying wheel and one for the second hand on the dial side. Now, can you spot what's wrong here? We have one tooth missing on our ratchet wheel. So we're gonna need a new ratchet wheel. There's the barrel. Pop that open. And here we got the mainspring that I will unwind by hand. I can tell this uh, mainspring has been swapped in more recent times because it's uh, a proper stainless steel one, whereas the earlier ones were blued steel. And if this watch was made in 1937, it would have had blued steel, I suppose. So uh, yeah, it's had a new mainspring at one point.
Okay, well the movement's been clean now and looking uh, quite spectacular if I can say so myself. I'm going to split this uh, video into two parts, so this is going to be the uh, end of part one and um, you can stay tuned for part two. If I don't completely bugger up the movement while putting it together, you shall have a new video within the week. But for now, um, I was thinking it was always nice to start on a movement where the balance has uh, had its capsules oiled. I'm going to fit the capsules on this and the hairspring onto the balance cock again, because that's nice to come back to. So first of all, I'm going to take the um, balance cock off the base movement again. I do put these on um, as it's a nice way of uh, cleaning the balance wheel with the hairspring etc. Seems to be an import stamp on this. GXM, if anybody knows what, that's, what um, importer that is, please let me know. So what I'm going to start with is, um, well, first of all, I'm going to take the, um, the uh, capsules out of my epilogue here. Fixo flex and drop, whatever it's called. I have also uh, treated the uh, escape wheel and pallet fork. Something that would have never happened on this movement originally, but it's a nice little upgrade that will help keep the oil where it should be. So I always like to start by fitting the um, lower capsule on these movements as um, so it just makes my life a bit easier. So what I'm going to do now is, with my oiler, this uh, Bergeron oiler, just a little tip, I'm going to put the little tip into my lower uh, balance jewel and leave a droplet of, of uh, Mobius 9010 oil. Um, I'm going to do that under the microscope because it's. Um, I need to control how much is going to go in there. So the capsule disc will also hold the regulator in place. regulator is actually sandwiched in between the uh, balance cock and the uh, and the uh, jewel, jewel disc, capsule disc or whatever you'd call it. One screw down. Let's see if we need to line up the hole a bit. Yep, we need to line up the hole. Let's uh, slid a bit out of position. There we go. Now 
this is all um, fiddly enough on a chronograph of this size. They have done little ladies' movements with these. Uh, absolutely tiny. This is large compared to that. Now, I have read, noticed the regulated pins look a bit wonky. Let's have a look under the microscope on that. Okay, I do believe it has that bend on purpose, but it's still a little wonky, so we'll straighten that up. So we've gotten those two little pins lined up. Um, so they are lined up next to each other, not uh, facing the opposite direction. So happy with that. Next, we're going to oil the upper capsule. Again, I'm going to use this oiler. I don't know if you can make it out. It's a little tip there. That's where the oil comes out. And that's what I'm going to hit inside the, um, inside the, um, and stuff jewel and it will go in and hit the cap jewel on the other side and deposit a little droplet. Now that's done, we're going to fit the balance back onto the balance cock. So we're going to do the reverse of what we did earlier. So the balance boot go into the balance cock and one of the spring coils is going to go into the uh, regulator pins. Now, because this is so fine, I'm going to do this under the microscope. Then we have our hairspring fastened into with the um, regulator boot and one coil as uh, so the breakaway over coil is uh, situated between those two uh, regulator pins and the regulator pin guard has been uh, turned back onto place so the final thing i'm going to do today is uh, hopefully see a free spinning balance Well, that's a good start. I'll put this uh, watch to the side and we'll um, continue putting it back together when I get the uh, new ratchet wheel. Hopefully that will come tomorrow. And uh, if not, we will get back to this when uh, the parts are available. Hope you enjoyed this video and um, please check out my website, mitka.co.uk if you like this kind of thing. I'm um, new to this uh, YouTube video thing, but I think it's a nice addition to uh, what I'm doing. Anyway, take care and stay tuned for part two.